Hi guys, Jangra here and welcome to another Minecraft server tutorial. If you're running a vanilla Minecraft server, did you know that you just aren't getting best performance possible? Maybe you just started up a world, did a share to land with your friends. Maybe you followed a guide on setting up a server, but you're running vanilla. Do you want better performance? Do you want more control over your server with plugins that allow you to customize the world, allow commands like slash home? Then you need a plugin server like paper. In this video, we're going to walk through the entire process of setting up a Minecraft 1.21 paper server, actually using Perper from installation running the server, connecting to it, customization with a few plugins. Stick around. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a paper server on your own PC. The downside of that is while it's free, it's not always on unless your computer's on and your computer's running the server. You also have to do port forwarding on your firewall to let your friends in from the outside. An alternative to that is to use a Minecraft server hosting provider like Apex Hosting, who is a sponsor of this video. Having a hosted server is always available. It's outside of your network so your friends can just connect to it directly. All you have to do is go to apexhosting.com. If you do, use my link, jangra.com slash apex. That helps support the channel. But get started, choose a server. Here's a six gigabyte one. Then just search for Perper and install the 1.21 latest server. And you're going to get exactly what we're setting up in this video. We'll look at the control panel in a little more detail at the end of this video when we're setting up plugins. All right, let's set up our own paper server. Okay, to set up our own Minecraft server using paper, the very first thing we want to do is just make a folder. I'm just going to put it right here on my desktop. And now we just need to download these server files. Now we can go to papermc.io and download paper from here. But we're actually going to install Perper, which is basically an exact drop-in replacement for paper. And it just adds some things to it. Let's go to download latest. Here it is right here. And we'll drag this into our paper server folder. All right, here's our folder. Let's rename this to paper.jar, even though it's Perper. The reason for that is if you look at the documentation for Perper, it tells you to use the installation from Paper. That's how close it is to it. So right down here, here's run the running the server, and here's the command we need to use. So we're just gonna copy this. I'll put this in the description. And it's also in a blog post that I've written and linked to in the description. We need to create a text file, new text document, and we're going to rename this start.bat and delete the txt extension. It's warning us that we're changing the extension to start.bat, which is what we want. And then we right click and then edit notepad and paste in that line that we just copied from the installation and we put pause at the end. So here, quick configuration to tell it how much memory to use. It's using four gigabytes of memory for this server. If we have a lot of people connecting, we can increase that. Save it, close it. I also want to mention here that if you don't see file extensions on here, it complicates things a little bit. Open up the view menu, click show file name extensions. Now I'm turning that off. It toggles it. So if we do view show file name extensions, you get the dot jar and dot bat on here. That makes it easier to make sure that you've got the right dot bat versus a dot txt extension. Let's take a quick step back to make sure that we have Java installed and that it's the right version. So if you just go to a command window, type Java dash dash version, you'll get a message here that tells you what version of Java you're running. Minecraft 1.21 needs Java version 21, which I have here. I'll have a link in the description to where you can download and install Java if you don't have it. Or if you have an old version, you'll need to install a new one to upgrade it. Now we run start.bat by double clicking on it. It's going to open up a command window and start installing. And it's quickly going to fail because we're missing eula.txt. Okay, so we started the server and had an error about eula.txt. Some new files got created here in our folder. We just need to edit eula.txt and change eula equals false to eula equals true. Save that, close it, and run start.bat again. Now this time it's going to, oh, I already have a server running. I'm gonna leave this in just so you can see some of the errors that we can see. It says here, failed to bind to port, which means that the port, the default port on the server, it was already in use. I do have another server running. That was the one that I was talking to you on in the beginning of the video. Okay, I killed it. Let's run start.bat again. You can see a bunch of other files got created here in that process. This time it should work. And here we are. Okay, if we bring Minecraft, this is just vanilla Minecraft 1.21 multiplayer. And here I have a localhost server connected. It's just connected to localhost. Let's make a new one just to make sure this works. 1.27.0.0.1. That's your local IP address always. You could use this or localhost. Here it is right here. And here we are in our horrible spawn. Okay, now that we have a server running, we need friends to be able to connect to it, right? So let's open up a command window and talk about how to do that. So here's a second command prompt window. We type ipconfig. 
This is going to show us all the IP addresses connected to our machine. So our local computer address is 10. Dot, in my case, yours will probably be different, is 10.0.0.209. This is the IP of this server inside of my network. Outside of my network from the rest of the world, that's going to be a completely different IP address. To get our external IP address, we can go to a website like showmyip.com and you're going to get a you're going to get IP address, and this is what people outside of your network will connect to. You want to use the short one that is just numbers, not the one that is just a bunch of numbers and letters. I've got these blocked out because I don't want to dox myself. This is the IP address that you're going to share with your friends. This, by the way, is why you only want to do this with people you trust, because you don't want people trying to get, make their way into your network. Now, in order for people to connect to your computer from outside of your network, you need to open up your firewall using port forwarding and your router is this IP address right here. And depending on your ISP, Mines Xfinity, you're going to get a login screen like this and you just need to know your username and password. You can Google it and the defaults might be what you have or if you've changed it, hopefully you've got that saved somewhere or you can contact your ISP tech support. We're going to be looking for things like advanced, port forwarding. And here it says, managing your home network settings is now easier than ever. Okay, I need to use a phone app. So I go to the phone app, look for port forwarding, and I'm going to configure TCP and UDP to do port forwarding to the Minecraft, the standard Minecraft port, which is 25565. You could Google how to port forward Minecraft. There's a million web pages around with information on how to do that. If your friends are inside your network though, they can use the internal IP address here, which if we add that to a server, there's yet another connection to that same IP address. We've got localhost, that can connect to this server. We've got 127.0.0.1. Again, only you can connect to your server with this address or localhost. Your friends inside your network will use this. If this doesn't work from inside your network, you might have to configure your Windows firewall to allow the Minecraft port in. That's all kind of messy. Personal home networking can be a little tricky. There are a lot of resources for you to figure out how to do all that for yourself. There's just so many different ways and so many different routers. I can't possibly go through them all. It's not so hard, but an easier way to do that is to get a hosted service provider and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff or keeping your computer on or security issues with opening up your firewall on your router. Okay, let's set up a few plugins. All right, so finally, the two major reasons that you would use Paper or Perper or any of these Minecraft plugin platforms is first for performance, way better than vanilla, or second that you can install plugins. Now plugins allow you to modify the server and vanilla clients can connect to it without making any modifications on their end. So the big difference between using a plugin server and a modded server is that plugin servers generally allow vanilla clients to connect to them. Modded servers require the same mods be installed on the server and the client. For a vanilla experience with some customizations that anybody can connect to, that's where paper comes in. And if we go to the spigot resource Sources page, you can see all of the plugins that are available for paper. There are 3,800 pages of plugins. There's so many plugins to use. We're just going to grab a couple of the more popular ones, Essentials X, for example. So the plugins that everybody installs on a server, you'll rarely find a server without these on it. Essentials X and Luckperms are two of the major ones, but there's just so many. If you wanted to make a Lifesteal server, you could install a plugin to do that, for example. Let's just install Essentials X and Luckperms. We can go to those download pages, either directly on their website, or I could have downloaded it from that Spigot site. And we just grab the latest release. And we can also add some add-ons like Essentials Chat, Essentials Spawn, Essentials Discord, Discord links, all kinds of stuff. And let's grab the Luckperm one. And again, here we want the bucket one, which covers paper. And we've got that downloaded. So now we've got all these plugins here. We just need to drag them into the plugins folder on our server. Let's stop the server. And then we just drag these into the plugins folder. And here's all these essentials that we downloaded and Luckperms is here. And then we start the server again. And you can see in the logs that some of these plugins are getting installed. There is some configuration that needs to be done. For example, this error, the Essentials Discord needed some login information, some authentication to be able to use that plugin. That's it. Type the plugins command and see what plugins are installed. This one's red because there was an error, but these other ones are running. And if we connect to the server again, we can do the same thing from here. Ouch, ouch. You can see here, oh, figures it's nighttime.
Anyway, the plugins command shows us the plugins that are installed. Now, if we're using a hosted server like Apex, it's even easier. You can just go into the control panel. Most hosting providers have this kind of functionality, plugin list, and you just search for the plugin that you want to install. So let's install LuckPerms. Just search for LuckPerms. Here it is right here. Click the install button. Just restart the server and it will have LuckPerms on it. All right, there you have it. We've set up a paper server and we've installed a few plugins just to see how that works. What plugins you're going to want to install really depends on how you want your server to run. I'll do some videos in the future about some cool plugins you can install. All right, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.